Desperate times call for desperate measures. And the mech in this video was certainly born of them. Viewed as an official Franken-mech, this 70-ton giant was a last-ditch attempt by the Capellan Confederation to try and close its widening technical problems with its neighbors. And while it was a huge achievement, inevitably it was draped in tragedy. Iconic to the Confederation in the years and decades that would follow, this video will begin the process of examining the birth and legacy of Earthworks Incorporated's Liao Branch. The Cataphrac. To understand the history of this 70-ton mech, one must examine the history of the Succession Wars in depth as to why it was such an enormous accomplishment for the Capellan Confederation, as well as to why it was such a crippling humiliation only shortly after its debut. Of the five great houses, the Confederation would be the least among its peers after the First and Second Succession Wars. Enormous levels of destruction were visited upon the Inner Sphere, whole levels of technology and almost irreplaceable production facilities were lost, both of which would take centuries to be reconstituted, which would not take place until near the time and just after the Fourth Succession War. The Capellans would be savaged much more severely by its neighbors during all of this, and lost substantial industrial and technological resources. After the first two succession wars, only one world in the entirety of the Confederation had the ability to produce heavy battle mechs above 65 tons, or assault mechs, which was Carver 5. There was the ability to refurbish and restore the vaunted Highlander battle mechs to succession war downgrade variants as well from the world of Cory during this time, but it was entirely dependent on salvage chassis being sent to them for restoration. Outside of this, for new productions, only 65 ton battle mechs or lighter had any production lines in the entirety of the Capellan Confederation. Worse still, there were very few light heavy production lines, meaning that most machines produced in the Confederation were lights and mediums. They were significantly behind in terms of heavy mech production compared to other houses. An unparalleled tragedy would strike the Confederation in the Third Succession War. The vital and important planet of Carver V would be lost to the Free Worlds League in 2953. Complete horror overwhelmed House Liao's leadership, and desperate assaults were launched to reclaim the world from the League. For the Free Worlds League, it was a prize. But it was not their world, at least not meaningfully yet. They would put up resistance but would be willing to sacrifice what made the planet so successful in the fighting, turning the once mighty and enormous factories into war zones for the Capellans to fight over. After 15 years of engagements, with a total of three full years of fighting happening in this time period, with over a decade lost in production, and enormous efforts and investments on behalf of the CCAF, the Capellan Confederation would take the world back in 2968, but was left with a husk of a planet. With the fall of Carver V, the Confederation lost their means of building heavier designs, but in retaking the world, they lost priceless military assets, and in the fighting to reclaim it, reduced that which made Carver V valuable, its mech factories, to rubble. The 15-year disaster became a permanent fixture now looming over House Liao. Attempts to address it failed time and time again as the house made futile attempts to capture other factory worlds. This, in essence, forced the Confederation to raid other houses in desperate bids to steal their assault mechs or heavies, or even just parts for them, barring what few reconditioned Highlanders trickled out of Cory itself. Decades would pass, and the Confederation's military would gradually decline. Not in their dedication, but in their ability to have the tools needed to fight many pitched battles with other houses. Crusaders and other heavy mechs like it were leaned on, as well as reserves of older heavy mechs, in vain attempts to face down monsters such as the Atlas, Awesome, or any other assortment of brutal assault mechs and other heavy assets. While there were many battlefield successes, this problem was growing, and a solution was consistently sought after. 
the solution would come in the 31st century, after decades of decline and humiliation. Despite not being able to produce mechs of various heavy and assault types anymore, many of their components could still be produced. The innovative people at Earthworks Liao Branch would cobble together a design from these wayward medium, heavy, and assault components, as well as fabricating several new elements to make everything come together. And the beginnings of a new battle mech, perhaps the savior of the Capellan Confederation's lingering military industrial problems, was beginning to take shape. It would be on the world of Tikhonov, one of the great prizes of the Confederation in centuries past, that the new production line would come into existence. A priority for the state and nation, the massive mech production facilities would begin to produce these new battle mechs in 3025. The 70-ton monster that came from this base was the CTF-1X Cataphract, and would immediately be used to try to restore the missing heavy components of the Capellan military forces. They had been trapped in an industrial wasteland of potential for over 70 years, and many of their mech forces were badly depleted, with medium mechs being forced to play the roles of heavies, and lighter heavies being forced into operating as assault mechs, or alongside them. The Cataphract thundered onto the battlefield as a revival of the CCAF. Pride could, and seemingly would, be restored in one of the great successor states. Producing brand new battle mechs had become exceedingly rare since the beginning of the Succession Wars, and despite being dubbed a Franken mech by many, it was one of the first new heavy designs developed in generations, not just in the Confederation, but in the Inner Sphere as a whole. This resourceful, innovative design would be viewed with a sense of national resurgence, which would be shattered with the beginning of the Fourth Succession War. Wife, in honor of our marriage, in addition to this morsel, I give you a vast prize. My love, I give you the Capellan Confederation! Hans Davian, August 20th, 3028. The immense accomplishment that was the Cataphract and its production was brushed aside with the surprise invasion of the Confederation by the newly formed Federated Commonwealth. The new forces the Capellans had been building, along with the mech designed to bring them back to some kind of parity with their rivals, was simply brushed aside. And worst of all, Tikhonov, the very base of production for this battle mech, would be lost in the fighting. Not only that, but the planet of Cori, the world that refurbished Highlander battle mechs, would too fall to the united House Steiner and Davian assault. Sadly, not only did the Cataphract fail to meaningfully stop the war machine that tore through its ranks and worlds, it was simply... lost. The Capellan situation had devolved into something even more dire than it had been before. The Cataphract would no longer simply be a Capellan mech, it would fall into the hands of the very forces which the Capellans had built the machine to repulse. The Federated Commonwealth, in fact, would later upgrade the Cataphract with technologies from the Helm Memory Core and press it into service against the clans during their invasion. But there is an interesting thing about this being a Franken-mech, which was despite the enormous investment, despite the humiliating loss of Tikhonov and the destruction of the CCAF at the hands of their most hated enemies, the Federated Commonwealth, it was very much possible to simply build a new facility. None of the parts in the Cataphract were particularly unique. There were a few supply chain issues, but all that had to be remade were a limited number of unique fabricated components that went inside of the design. The parts from the Marauder, Phoenix Hawk, and others were still able to be replicated and produced on multiple sites. It wouldn't take long before a new facility was already in place on a planet known as Grand Base. Much like the Confederation itself, the Cataphract proved harder to simply destroy or bend to the will of the invading Federated Commonwealth. By the time of the clan invasion, 
the Capellandarm forces would be rebuilt into a new fighting force, and it's estimated that 25% of all of their heavy mechs would consist of cataphracts. And these battle mechs would be amongst the Capellan forces that would inevitably liberate their lost territories. The cataphract, despite originating as a failure in many respects for the Confederation, would become one of its most recognized champions. And despite the Capellan failures of the Fourth Succession War, one of its grandest accomplishments. The original design built by the Capellan Confederation was the CTF-1X Cataphract. It used components from a multitude of production lines to even allow it to be made possible, and thus takes on a strange looking appearance overall, at least as compared to its heavy mech contemporaries. Due to the era of its design, just prior to the discovery of the Helm Memory Core, it uses standard Intersphere Succession Wars era technologies, and thus has a normal cockpit, gyro, and internal structure. Though the prototype of the cataphract, the CTF-0X, has the command mech quirk, this is dropped in the production model. Instead, the CTF-1X and all future cataphracts benefit from the protected actuators trait, giving it some protection against infantry assaults. As an aside, it utilizes the Commutech Multi-Channel 10 communication system, and its targeting and tracking equipment is the Blazefire Sight Lock system. In order to keep the cataphract in line with other heavies and light assault mechs, the decision was made to utilize a 16-ton VOX-280 Fusion Standard engine to propel the design through the battlefield. This engine is common for its time, and results in the cataphract having a maximum speed of 64 kilometers per hour, or 6 movement points in the tabletop game. This is essential for it to fulfill its general heavy battle mech role, as without being able to move at this rate, it could not keep up with general battle line units in the inner sphere. Strategically, this means that the cataphract is a viable vehicle for most tasks set out for it, especially given the expectation that it would fulfill a multitude of heavy positions in the CCAF. Due to the date of its production, and due to it having no history as a Star League era mech, the cataphract is installed with single heat sinks, and for its time, it is adequately cooled. It has six tons dedicated to increasing its capacity, bringing it to 16 total heat sinks on board. This means it can fire all of its close range weapons without an issue, or fire its heavy weapons at long or medium ranges without an issue. This is very adequate for its time, and actually means that the cataphract is more able to consistently put out fire at medium ranges at least as long as its ammunition lasts, than a Marauder, which is a very impressive feat for a mech that weighs 5 tons less. Despite its odd appearance, looks can be potentially deceiving, and in the case of the Carfractoi, its appearance conceals a very heavily armed battle mech for its time. It has two primary weapons on board, starting with a Kares Arms Smasher PPC, which is installed in its right arm. This is an energy weapon, meaning it will not run out of ammunition. It has long range and is excellent at smashing through enemy armor plating. To work in tandem with this and to work at close ranges more easily, installed into its right torso, the CTF-1X has a Sarlon Maxi Cannon Type 10 Auto Cannon. This hits just as hard as the PPC, produces less heat, and has no issues being used at closer ranges. It can either work in tandem with its particle cannon, and not cause the mech to overheat, or it can work with other systems, and the results are the same. Finally, for close range fighting, it is well armed with four Kara's Arms medium lasers, though two of these are rear mounted unfortunately. Still, these lasers ensure that it has backup weapons in close when its autocannon inevitably runs dry. One small issue it may face is that it only has 10 rounds of ammunition for the autocannon, meaning this weapon's time on the battlefield can be very limited. As a low-tech level design, though not a primitive one, the CTF-1X has only one option when it comes to physical defense, which will come from the tonnage invested into armor. 
The Cataphylact dedicates 11 tons to its overall protection in this way, giving it 176 points of armor to distribute across the frame. This makes it more protected than many of its peers, such as the Warhammer, and almost puts it on par with the Marauder. Though not as heavily protected as an Orion or Grasshopper, it is still very much guarded from reasonable attacks or incoming fire. This is also comparable to many lighter assault mechs, which the Cataphract was meant to cover for in some senses as well, such as the Victor or Zeus. Overall, its protection component is respectable for the era of its design. Though it would be a stretch to say that it is heavily armored. The Cataphract, or being a Franken mech, despite its failings to live up to expectations during the Fourth Succession War, is a superb mech for its time. The CTF 1X hits hard at multiple ranges, is well armored, is able to be produced reliably, and this all makes for a great battle mech for frontline formations, and it fills the holes that the CCAF most desperately needed to cover at these times. It is strategically and tactically a fantastic performer, and this was most definitely the right mech for the Capellans in their time of need. Their designers called it right, and were resourceful enough to create this monster. All the same, there is no way one mech design could save the Confederation from the surprise assault launched by Hans Davian. But this design, and its future iterations, would continue to have a major role inside of the Capellan Confederation. And rightly so. Its popularity is not unearned, both in-universe and by the player base. Due to its very nature, it is unsurprising that the Cataphract would be an excellent platform as far as being modified with new technologies and refits over time. Also, due to it being captured at one point by the Federated Commonwealth, this mech would have refits that went even outside of the Confederation's borders. With so many modifications, I can't possibly cover all of them in this video, but this portion of the video will cover three alternatives and newer variations of the Cataphract. After the discovery of the Helm Memory Core, and with the capture of Tikhonov, the Federated Commonwealth would continue the production of Cataphracts, though they would update this adaptable unit to their own, new, deadly configuration. It would be very much in line with the Davian's military preferences of the day as well, replacing out its PPC for an autocannon-based weapon solution. To start with, it upgrades its 280 VOX standard to a General Motors 280 XL engine. This gives it 8 more tons to utilize in the machine, though it makes it more vulnerable to engine death by either criticals to the engine or due to instant destruction upon the loss of a torso. With the weight saved from this, the Cataphract would become equipped with jump jets to enhance its mobility. It maintains its medium laser payload and rear firing lasers, as well as its 16 standard heat sinks and 11 tons of standard armor. Things begin to change beyond this as it upgrades its AC-10 autocannon to a Mirrodon XL LB-10X autocannon and gives it two tons of ammunition. The PPC, as it was mentioned before, is replaced by a General Motors Nova 5 autocannon, or an Ultra AC-5 autocannon. The latter might not do as much damage to one location, but it produces less heat and has scatter damage against enemy targets. The LB-10X autocannon comes with stock cluster ammunition, but this can be substituted for solid slug ammunition, letting it deliver single rounds to one site on the enemy target as well, or if both types of ammunition are brought, it can potentially switch between standard ammunition and cluster ammunition, giving it some ability to crit seek. In either case, these weapons work well together, and they generate minimum amounts of heat, allowing it to fight at long ranges comfortably, as well as being used to enhance its close range punch with little concern for overheating. The final thing to note is that it does get added protection, but not in the form of armor. Cases are added to the mech to preserve the chassis in the event of an ammunition explosion. Even if it is likely to knock out the mech during the battle, these will reduce the risk to the pilot and allow for the mech to be retrieved and potentially salvaged afterwards. This machine performed well for the Federated Suns, 
and was pressed into service to fight the far superior clans during the invasion. It would also be given in significant numbers to the St. Ives Compact, in order to be used to ironically stop House Liao if necessary. This was done deliberately as well, as a mark against the Compelling Confederation's pride. Much of what this updated variant is, is born of taking ideas from House Davian that had been worked on and incorporating them into a newer, Liao-centric model. What resulted is the CTF-3L, which would appear as one of the main technological refits of the CTF-1X. To start with, it incorporates the LBX autocannon from the 3D in the model. It also uses an XL engine as well, lowering durability but giving extra tonnage for the model to use. And use it, it does. Smartly as well, the 3L incorporates double heatsink technology, and can sink 32 heat overall. The Ultra AC5 is replaced with an ERPPC, providing harder strikes on individual areas, better range, and a weapon which doesn't need ammunition to operate. Because of its double heat sinks as well, it rarely needs to worry about overheating despite the ERPPC in the design. All of the medium lasers on board are upgraded to the more accurate, harder hitting medium pulse lasers. No jump jets are added to this design, and instead it adopts a mask system on board, potentially allowing this mech to climb to speeds as high as 86 km per hour for short bursts. A deadly advantage for a 70 ton battle mech in many circumstances. The 3L is, for the clan invasion era, very probably the best variant of the Cataphract, and would have been one of the mechs that played a huge role during the Chaos March, and the Capellan reconquest of so much of its lost territories. It is only fitting that many of these worlds were lost while the Cataphract was first being deployed, and then they were reconquered after it was perfected by the Capellan Confederation. This is what redemption looks like in the eyes of the Capellan Armed Forces. In the latter years of Battletech, so far, the Capellan Confederation would become the premier military power of the Inner Sphere for some time. It didn't disarm at the end of the Blakist Era. It continued to update and upgrade local industries, especially with its mutual assistance treaties with its periphery neighbors. Its armies would be well stocked with advanced weapon systems, and not purely a bulk of cheap mechs. And the CTF-5L is the latest update to one of these mighty war machines. To increase durability, it drops its XL engine back down to a traditional fusion standard engine. It saves weight instead by installing an endosteel structure and XL gyro. Double heat sinks are the norm by this time, as a default and it installs two additional double heat sinks, giving it a total of 12, allowing it to reduce heat by 24 every turn. For protection, it ups its game by installing 13.5 tons of laser reflective armor, which is more resilient to energy attacks and confers 216 points of overall armor. Once more, it has two rear-firing medium lasers. For short-range fighting, it relies on twin small variable small pulse lasers. But for its main weapons, it is heavily gunned with a combination of a Gauss rifle mounted in the right torso, which is given a case for protection, and it has an ERPPC as well. Both of these weapons operate at long ranges, and can crack through armor quite well with hammer blow after hammer blow. This is a refit for a new era, and marches for the Chancellor into the battles they now wage for supremacy of the Inner Sphere against their traditional foe, the Federated Sons, and for the confrontation on the horizon with Clan Wolf at the center of the Inner Sphere. Time has changed the Cataphract, but its role stays the same. It is there to be what the Confederation needs it to be. The Cataphract was born out of anxiety and poverty in the Succession Wars for House Liao and was to address the deep inadequacies the CCAF had in terms of their material equipment against their fellow house rivals. While it was up to that task, it was not in sufficient numbers to achieve it by 3028, only three years after the beginning of its production, and most tragically would be smashed in the most humiliating defeat in generations. 
the Confederation at one point was seemingly going to be deposited into the dustbin of history. Or at best it would have been left as a rump state, ignored by all and of little value. While the Confederation was associated with humiliation, it was also associated with its resurgence, resiliency, determination, resourcefulness, innovation, and with its restoration. 125 years after its original deployment, this battle mech has stood over the crushed remnants of almost all of House Liao's enemies in the meantime. It marched at the head of the CCAF when they assaulted the heart of the Federated Commonwealth in the region that became known as the Chaos March, restoring much of their border. The St. Ives Compact, a Davian-backed breakaway region, is no more, largely reintegrated into the Compelling Confederation, and the Cataphract had its role to play in the military side of ending this decades-long political feud. The forces of the Word of Blake would be faced down by it in their crusade, and would be halted, and now the Word of Blake is no more. The Cataphract would stand against the Republic of the Sphere after Grey Monday, too, and would participate in the Confederation's assault on the new state at the core of the Inner Sphere. As of the making of this video, the Confederation still stands. The Republic does not. There is a great flavorful history to the Cataphract. It is a story design, and one with an incredible origin, which is unable to be divorced narratively from the Confederation. It is a battle mech which made space for itself to become iconic. It's as if Frankenstein's monster survived and became the village hero. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I do updates very frequently and you'll be happy with the content, I think. Also, a huge thank you to all the YouTube members for this channel. When you hit the join button and become a member, you take an extra step in supporting the content this channel does. And I can't thank you enough. Because this content is only made possible because of viewers like you. With that, I will see all of you in the comment section below.